In this video on vectors, we're going to be solving geometric problems. And there are two key skills that are going to help us with these types of problems. The first one is to do with finding the position vector of a point dividing a line segment. So you might have this situation here where you have two vectors, OA and OB, and then you have a point dividing the line segment AB. Uh, let's call this point P. And then we could say that AP to PB is some ratio, let's say lambda to mu. So just some variables representing any given ratio. And then we might want to find the position vector of that point. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, we can use our triangle law. So we can say OP is equal to a OA plus AP. OA plus AP. And we can also represent AP as a fraction of AB. Uh, because we've called this ratio lambda to mu, that fraction is going to be lambda over the total length of the line, which is lambda plus mu. Uh, and that is the fraction of the vector AB. And then we can represent the, the vector AB uh, in terms of the position vectors OB and OA. So we can say OP is OA plus lambda on lambda plus mu. Uh, multiplied by OB take away, uh, which we learned in the video on position vectors. We learned about how to find AB in terms of those two position vectors. So go back to that video if you want to check that out. Okay, so this formula uh, is actually really useful uh, for solving geometric problems. Um, and if it's not quite making sense yet, you'll, we'll go through some examples and it will start to click. For now, I hope you can appreciate, yes, it might look complicated, but all we're basically saying is that OP is OA plus a fraction of AB. That's all that this really says. Okay, we also need to know how to compare coefficients. If you have the situation where you have two non-parallel vectors, so if A and B are non-parallel vectors, and you are told that uh, let's say P A plus Q B equals R A plus S B. If you're given this information, then you know that P equals R and Q equals S. So these coefficients must be equal. Um, just to explain that a bit further, let's say you're given um, a vector sum diagram, let's say this is 2a plus 2b, and the resultant, let's call that c. Let's say you've given this, and then let's say you're given another diagram, and you don't know the multiples of a and b, but you're told the resultant is the same, so ka plus kb also equals c, uh, then you know that k must equal 2. Uh, because there's no other multiples of A and B that you can use there to make C. Like you couldn't do, for example, a quarter A plus a quarter B. You would not get the same resultant. So that's what this, this statement is saying. If A and B are non-parallel vectors and you're given that one vector sum is equal to another, you know the coefficients of those vectors must be the same. Okay, so these two... These two facts are going to help us with the following problem. So let's get into it. Okay, for a first example, we're given a diagram and we're told Wx is the vector A, Wy is the vector B, Wz is the vector C. And we're told that xy equals yz. And the question asks, prove that a plus c equals 2b. Okay, before we even start answering the question, uh, I hope you can interpret this equality correctly. So what is this telling us? Well, firstly, it's telling the lengths of these lines x, y, and y, z are equal. But because they're also vectors, it's telling us that they're parallel and they share a point. Therefore, x, z must be a straight line. Okay, I hope you can interpret that piece of information there. On the diagram, you can draw that straight line from x to z and that might help us out with the question. So we want to prove a plus c equals 2b. And we have this situation here, right, where y, well, let me draw that point a bit neater, 
where y is dividing this line segment xz into a particular ratio. Uh, and we actually know that ratio is one to one because we're told y is the midpoint. Uh, or in other words, these line segments are equal. Okay, uh, so we're going to start off with what we just talked about by finding the position vector uh, to the point that divides the line segment. So we're going to say y w, sorry, w y equals w x plus the fraction of the line x z. Um, and we know that's a half. So it's a half x z. Okay, w x we know is a, x z we can represent as c take a, again using our skills from the position vectors video. So this is uh, a half times c take a. And then simplifying this, this is going to be a uh, take a half a. So this is going to be a half a plus a half c. And this was w y, in other words, b. All right. And then if we multiply this by 2, this is going to be 2b equals a plus c. And we have proved a plus c equals 2b as required. Okay, so you can see how that, that formula we went through uh, really helps. And it's almost like a shortcut for these types of questions. Okay, on to the second example it says OAB is a triangle, OA equals A and OB equals B. The point M divides OA in the ratio 2 to 1. MN is parallel to OB. Express the vector ON in terms of A and B. Okay, so OB is B, OA is A, and we want to find ON. Okay, so we again we have this situation where we have a point dividing a line segment. We're going to use that formula again. So we say that's OA plus AN plus AN. So let's think about how we can represent AN in terms of AB. Well, we don't actually know that fraction. Uh, so we're just going to use a variable. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, written as a fraction, we can just say it's mu times AB. So some multiple of AB. Just using a singular unknown here is easier. It just simplifies things rather than, you know, writing it as a fraction. Okay, so OA is A and AB we can say is B take A. So this is going to be mu times B take A. Then we can simplify this further. A take mu A, we can write as one take mu a plus mu b and so this is our expression for on so far uh, and we want another expression for on so that we can compare coefficients this is where the comparing coefficients comes in so how can we find another expression for on well if we go uh, in this direction so om plus mn we can find a different way of finding that vector sum. So we can also say ON equals OM plus MN. Okay, OM, we actually know the fraction of A that that represents because they tell us that ratio. Uh, so M divides OA in the ratio two to one, therefore OM is two thirds A and MN because it's parallel to OB, MN must be some multiple of B. So now we have a different expression for ON that we can compare to our first expression. Firstly, we can say clearly one take mu equals two thirds. And then this is actually going to give us a value for mu straight away. So if one take mu equals two thirds, therefore mu equals a third. And then going back to the question, we want to express the vector ON in terms of A and B. So all we need to do is replace these coefficients with the fractions that we've worked out. 
Um, so therefore, therefore O n equals uh, two thirds a plus a third b. Okay, because a th uh, we found mu to be a third. So there is our answer to that question. Express the vector O n in terms of a and b. Part B says show that a n to m b equals one to two. Okie doke. So, well, this kind of involves interpreting what this means if mu equals a third. This what we found down here, because mu represents. I mean, it essentially tells you the answer because mu represents the fraction of the line a b that is a n. That's how we got this formula in the first place, right? We said a n is equal to some fraction or some multiple of a b. Uh, now, if that fraction is a third, we can say then that a n equals a third a b. Again, as mu equals a third. So then we can straight away say that that ratio would be one to two. All right, so not much work you needed for B, just uh, interpreting what you found in part A and showing that you understand the work that you've done. Okay, on to the next example. Example three says OABC is a square, M is the midpoint of OA and Q divides BC in the ratio one to three. AC and MQ meet at P. If OA equals A and OC equals C, express OP in terms of A and C. And then part B says show that P divides AC in the ratio two to three. Okay, so again, we're looking for this situation where we have a point dividing a line segment. And in this case, uh, we're looking for OP. So the line segment P is dividing is AC. All right, we're told also that OC is uh, C and OA is A. Again, we're going to use that formula we talked about. So OP is OA, OA plus the fraction of AC. And because we don't know that ratio, again, let's use uh, you know a, an unknown to represent that multiple of AC. OA, we're going to call A as the question indicates. And then AC, we can use our knowledge of position vectors to say that that's C take A. Then simplifying, we have one take mu A plus mu C, which is equal to the vector, the position vector OP. Okay, that's a good start. And as we did in the previous question, we want to find another expression for OP so that we can compare coefficients. Uh, to get from O to P, we can also go OM to MP. So also OP is going to equal OM plus MP. We know OM because they tell us that M is the midpoint of OA. So OM is just going to be a half A, half A, but we don't have an expression for MP yet. In order to find an expression for MP, we want an expression for MQ. So MQ is our next target. And just a quick side note here, when you're solving these vector geometry questions, it can be a bit of a like work backwards situation. You find yourself looking for expressions for vectors and then you find that you have a missing piece of information and you want to go and fill that piece of information in. So as I was saying, I was looking for MP. In order to find MP, I want MQ. So now I go and find the vector MQ. Um, so, so you often will find yourself doing that in these types of questions. Okay, so I want an expression for MQ. MQ, I could say, is MO going around, going around the square, M to O, OC, plus OC, plus CQ. So MO is negative a half A, 
OC is C, CQ, we're told that ratio in the question, they tell us Q divides BC in the ratio 1 to 3, and also CB is going to be equivalent to the vector A as well because they're parallel, um, and OABC is a square, so CB is equal to OA. Okay, so CQ then is going to be 3 quarters of A. Right, using that ratio here. So CQ is 3 quarters A. Okay, then let's simplify this one. Negative a half A plus 3 quarters A. That's going to be a quarter A plus C. And so now we have an expression for MQ. MP is going to be some multiple of that. Um, so let's just make a note of that. Therefore, MP is some multiple of MQ. So therefore, OP is equal to OM plus K lots of a quarter A plus C. Um, and then simplifying this expression, uh, this is going to be, well, the work out I'm going to be doing here is a half plus K on 4, which I could write as 2 on 4 plus K on 4, which is 2 plus K on 4. So for this expression for OP, we're going to have 2 plus K on 4A plus KC. Okay, so going back to our question again, uh, we have two expressions for OP. Uh, here and here. We can now compare that coefficients. So straight away we can see that mu equals k. So let's make some space for this next set of working out. We can straight away see that mu equals k. And we also have that 1 take mu equals 2 plus k on 4. Um, and we can substitute in for k mu for k here, so we get therefore 1 take mu equals 2 plus mu on 4. Then simplifying this, uh, multiplied by 4, we get 4 take 4 mu equal to 2 plus mu. And simplifying further, we would get 5 mu equal to 2. So mu equals 2 on 5. Okay, so quite a lot of work involved there in terms of finding the two expressions for OP and then comparing coefficients. Um, and actually, we still need to finish this off. We want to express OP in terms of A and C. Well, using the fact that mu equals two fifths, we would have OP is equal to three fifths A plus two-fifths C. Okay, so that was part A. And then part B says, show that P divides AC in the ratio two to three. Again, we just need to interpret this answer. So what does the fact that mu equals two-fifths actually mean in terms of our diagram? That means AP is two-fifths of AC. If we know AP is two-fifths of AC, we must know that ratio is two to three. Um, so, uh, as we could say as AP equals two fifths of a I'm forgetting the letters AC therefore AP to PC equals two to three okie doke there you go again we're doing all of the work in part A part B is just interpreting what we found in part A on to the final question example four says OPQ is a triangle, 2PR equals RQ, and 3OR equals OS, OP equals A, OQ equals B, show that OS equals 2A plus B, and well, let's start with that part A first. We're looking for OS. To find OS, it's going to be helpful to find OR, right? Because if we know R, then we, if we know OR, then we know OS due to this equality here. So how are we finding OR? Well, we have that situation again where we have R 
uh, dividing a line segment into a ratio. So again, we can use that formula we've been using so far. OR we can say is OP plus the fraction of PQ. Uh, and now we know that fraction already because we tell us they tell us that PR 2PR equals RQ. So what would that ratio be if we know that this that RQ is twice PR. Well, this is going to be one to two, right? In other words, PR is a third, a third of PQ. And PQ, we can say it's B take A. So then OR becomes A, OP is A, plus a third B take A. Simplifying further, we get two thirds A plus a third B for OR and because they tell us 3 OR equals OS we can immediately say that um, that OS equals 3 OR equals 2A plus B because we multiplied that by 3 and we have OS equals 2A plus B as required B part B says point T is added to the diagram such that OT equals negative B. Prove that points T, P and S lie on a straight line. Okay, so I'm going to draw the straight line first and then the point T. So it looks a bit neater. So point T is over here such that OT is negative B. All right, we want to prove that T, P and S lie on a straight line. To do this, we want to find SP and PT. And if we can show that they're parallel vectors, then we can say that they are collinear. So we're looking for SP and PT. All right, SP. How can we find an expression for SP in terms of A and B? Well, we know OS, therefore we know SO. So we can say SP is SO plus OP, right? SO to OP is SP. Then this is going to be, well, we know OS was 2A plus B, therefore SO is negative 2A plus B, and OP is A. Then this is negative 2A take B plus A, that's negative A take B. PT, this would be negative A and then negative B. And we've already shown that, in fact, SP equals PT. They're not only parallel, but they have an equal magnitude as well. Um, so as SP equals PT, uh, they must be parallel. And because they share a point, they must be, the points SP and T must be collinear. So we can finish with a statement such as this one. So as SP equals PT, SP and PT are parallel. So as SP equals PT, SP and PT are parallel and share the point P, SP and T must lie on a straight line. All right, there you go. That was four examples of solving geometric problems on the topic of vectors. I hope you found that useful. Um, I think these are really important skills when you're learning about vectors. Finding the position vector of point dividing a line segment, this comes up a lot. And also comparing coefficients is another key skill. Okay, so please leave a like if you did find that useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.